Now we have 1.2 trillion in credit card debt uh, at 29% interest. That sounds like that's going to work out well in the end. Um, so that's done now. That financing is over with. And they're now tapping into uh, the most liquid asset markets in the world, which are gold and silver. So we've got Western investors that are selling metal in order to cover debt, credit card debt and other debt. Um, and the East, central banks and Asia, Asian retail, are buying and you can hear the sucking sound as the the transfer of real wealth moves from west to east more so than i've ever seen in my lifetime special coverage from the gould symposium in boca raton florida is brought to you by contango or developing alaska's next gold mines hello and welcome back to soar financially where we discuss the macro to understand the micro my name is kai hoffman i'm the edgear mining guy on twitter ceo of the soar financial group and of course your host for this channel. Really looking forward to the next conversation that we're having here at the Rule Symposium in Florida. It's with Rich Checkin, president over at Asset Strategies International and somebody we've had on the channel for the first time back in November and we met in New Orleans. Yes, at the you, were, you did an excellent job uh, uh, moderating our panel. That's how we first got to know oh, each stop other. It, stop and it. I wish we'd have done it sooner. Oh, absolutely. Sooner. No, it was a pleasure meeting you and uh, you're, you're a bullion dealer. Yes. So just to give a bit, a bit of background, where, where you come from, uh, maybe we can just recap, like what, what does Asset Strategies International do? Yeah, so we're a full service tangible asset dealer. We buy and sell gold, silver, platinum, palladium, bars, coins, certificates. Uh, we even deal in rare coins, uh, early US gold and silver, world and ancients. So it's a lot, but basically anything in the precious metal space that's available in real tangible assets, not stocks and so forth, but real tangible assets we buy and sell. No, fantastic. Just a you know, frame of mind as well. Because, yeah. you know, it's like we often have, you know, we, we talk gold, silver and others, but we don't want to scare anybody into buying gold. We want to look at the fundamentals. Like exactly. what is driving gold? Like what's behind the gold price move these days? And how's the overall environment? Like how's the economy? And that's, I think, where we should start. Absolutely. Um, how are we doing? How is the U.S. doing? Like you're U.S. based, obviously. So yeah. how is the U.S. economy doing? I think uh, the Fed, like they were three, four years ago, where they misunderstood and uh, misdiagnosed transitory. I think they're just as far along misdiagnosing the strength of the consumer in America. Um, you heard last year uh, from the Fed, and he's been reiterating this over time, that we have a strong economy, strong consumer base, household savings is strong, uh, and I think they've got it completely wrong. They're basing that on higher consumption in the US. Uh, what he's missing is this year, uh, although it's down the rate of inflation, Everything this year still costs 3% more than last year. Everything last year cost 10% more than the year before that. Um, so people are still buying what they need. It just costs a whole hell of a lot more and they're spending more. The question is, how do you pay for it? Used to pull it out of their house, home equity line. Now that means they've got to go from a three to 8% mortgage rate. Uh, they're not going to do that. <laughs> then they went to credit cards, right? We saw this last year and into this year. Now we have 1.2 trillion in credit card debt uh, at 29% interest. That sounds like that's going to work out well in the end. Um, so that's done now. That financing is over with. And they're now tapping into uh, the most liquid asset markets in the world, which are gold and silver. So we've got Western investors that are selling metal in order to cover debt credit card debt and other debt. Um, and the East, central banks and Asia, Asian retail, are buying. And you can hear the sucking sound mm -hmm. as the, the transfer of real wealth moves from West to East, more so than I've ever seen in my lifetime. Yeah. Household savings is an interesting one. I was watching one of the financial media channels on, on, the, on the TV, I think yesterday morning. Yeah. And I saw an ad telling people to save money. Wow, that's there a concept. There was an ad like, from some ad council, I have no idea, but it's like there was some weird guinea, you know, uh, piggy bank kind of looking person yeah. and somebody was putting money into it. And then it's like, oh yeah, see you next month? See you next month. So it's like put $100 in. It's like the weirdest ad I've seen, but it, it tells you a lot. Like when you see those ads running, like there's something's off. Like people are apparently not saving enough money. And then when I look Clearly. at other headlines where people, where, where I can read like that 30, 35% of the US consumers planning to go into debt to travel this summer, we have a problem. We have a major problem. And, and what they're not telling you in that piggy bank commercial is that the real return on your investment of saving dollars or euro or yen is negative or has been for a long, long time. Um, I agree with them. Save money, but save real money. Save gold. 
Yeah, it was interesting to see that. It's like that commercial it really threw me off. Like, I forgot who was behind it. In the end, you see a small logo. Yeah. But it was some, you know, probably non profit or whatever. Sounds like ineffective it. marketing if you don't remember who. Yeah, it's just like, <laughs> but I remember the weird looking piggy bank. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But um, the, the strength of the consumer, I think, is a really interesting topic. We're in the US, it's service based, obviously, a service based economy. Yeah. Um, let's talk about all the money that has been, you know, sort of pumped into the system. Like, have we chewed through all of that? Like, all the COVID yeah. money, like the $2,000 and everything, all that money people have gotten is it, is so it gone? Depend, depends who you're looking at the chewing so um the the bottom line in terms of the expansion of the money supply that's really not over yet now i haven't seen it expand i threw up a chart this morning in my presentation where you know i, I showed the money supply and the gold price and the money supply is not at the peak but it isn't far from it. So, you, you know, they were supposed to be reducing the balance sheet at the Fed and they haven't done a lot of that. OK, so the money supply is still ginormous. Um, you look at the, the chewing at the other end, and I do think that the consumers, for the most part, have chewed up all their stimmy checks and everything else. And, you know, they're like I said, they're eating through Well, they can't eat through the home equity line. They have eaten through credit cards and now they're starting to eat up their real assets of real value in order to pay the debts down. Yeah. So I, I think we chatted yesterday and you mentioned like, well, people are not refinancing their mortgage or taking out a second mortgage even, which is a thing in the US. Not not so much in Europe that you take two or three, it four mortgages. When I was a kid in the sixties and seventies, yeah. yeah, no question. So, so so where do people go for, for funding? Is it credit card debt or is it like are we spiraling out of control? Like what, what's the I think we're spiraling like how desperate is the US consumer right now? Like I, let's maybe exaggerate a little bit. I but, think uh, we're spir spiraling out of control. Um, but that being said, I, I, I don't want to paint a bleak picture. I think we've, we we stray from time to time, but we also find our way back. Um, and I think we're starting to find our way back a little bit, um, but we've gone a bit too far. Um, I, I talk to people um, in the West now that are precious metals believers, right? They, they have bought gold, it's stored its value, and they're tapping into it now because they have still run up debt, right? Um, so they're starting to pay that down. At least they have it to do that with. And you know, people are stuck and they're like, I want to buy gold here, but uh, where? Where's it going to come from? I, I have a couple suggestions, you know, <laughs> find the money because holding dollars long term is not going to be savings. Holding gold long term will. So the question is, how can you get some of that and parlay it into gold? One thought is take some profits in the stock market. You know, everybody talks about the nominal highs and we've made like 30 plus new haul time highs in the Dow this year or something like that. Um, but if you measure the Dow in gold, we're not even 60% of the 1999.com bubble. We are nowhere near real all-time highs. Gold is preserving value, dollars are not, but you measure the stock market in dollars and it looks inflated. Sell some, take some profit, not all of it, and put it into gold. Pool your assets with other investors or family members. Buy some gold. Find a way to get some real money, real wealth in your portfolio. I think it's important more now than than probably that I can remember. When you're saying that, one thought that went into my head, it sounds like a 1% problem. Like mm. what were you discussing? Like it sounds like I'm exaggerating a little bit, but it yeah. sounds like it's more of a, for the, for the upper classes. Like, you know, you know, it's like, how does like somebody who works at McDonald's, like assume that does makes $15 an hour, yeah. how, how do they protect themselves? Can they even like, what, what's the flexibility? So I'm looking for that because yeah, it seems so like the, 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 the scissor, what do you call that? It's like that gap, that yeah. wealth gap is ever increasing. It's a great question. And part of the barrier to owning gold in the past has been the high entry point, right? So even when it was 250 an ounce, $250 an ounce, 20 some odd years ago, that was a lot of money back then. And, and that middle class couldn't reach for it. Um, Gold still does its job like it has for 5,000 years. It's still preserving purchasing power, buying the same number of goods and services as it always did. But what has changed and what's kind of like light years ahead now is how we deliver that to you. So now I don't want to make this a product sell, but I have products and I know there's others out there where you can have an entry point into the gold market, owning physical gold, 100% backed, no storage fees, secured on your behalf for $50. Right? You can do accumulation plans. You don't have to buy a full ounce of gold. You can start small. When I started working in asset strategies 28 years ago, I couldn't afford an ounce of gold at 250 an ounce or whatever it was, right? Um, so what I did is I started buying silver. That went up in price. I sold some of that. I parlayed that into gold, started making more money, started buying more gold. So you got to start somewhere. Nowadays, I, I wish they had it back then. 
You know, I could have been buying gold for $5, you know, not 50, but even now, most people can come up with $50 a month, $50 a quarter. Start somewhere. This doesn't have to be a 1% problem. Yeah. Interesting. Like when you talk about the, the price of gold and all that, like I look at $2,400 gold, the question now, is it expensive? No. Like, no. Because if I look at the price tag, it looks expensive. Unequivocally, no. So I've been saying this for two years. Gold at all time highs is dirt cheap. <laughs> Silver at 60% of all time highs is even cheaper. So, so both these metals consolidated now for about five years at all time highs or 60% of all time highs. I'm not a technical analyst, uh, analyst, but I know that you don't consolidate for four years to go down, right? We're building the platform to go higher. And that has started now in earnest, the end of 2023 and the beginning of 2024. And silver now is starting to get some winning in its sales as well. It's outperforming gold this year, like we would expect in a bull market. So, you know, if you're waiting for the price to dip significantly, I think you have missed the memo and misread the, the text. Uh, gold is going up, take advantage of it. You got low prices and low premiums, and that's a great combination for accumulation. Does gold have too much competition? right now in, in terms of generating returns just looking at the S&P 20% almost year over year annual growth rate um, what else we have we have Bitcoin has been growing yeah. like crazy what else is competing with us like it seems like there's a lot of uh, other products that are to get is sucking attention away from it there's always been something else to suck attention throwing real estate and everything else you know there, there are other products out there all through humanity um, but gold does its job and has a a role to play. We're not talking convert your portfolio into gold. We're talking right. like five, 10, 15 percent uh, tops into gold as wealth insurance. Um, and I think that still suits most investors. Uh, so, no, I don't think there's too much out there. And, and if you're comparing it to, you know, the S&P or the Dow, again, measure those vehicles in gold and which has been outperforming all of the stock markets since 2000 by the way. Um, measure it in gold and you tell me if you get a different answer. Um, for those that understand what gold does at versus how we measure other things of value, I think they'll have an appreciation and, and an understanding why it ought to be in their portfolio now, as always. We, we need to talk about the next six months. Okay. You know, it should be quite turbulent. The, we're expecting potential Fed rate cuts uh, of one or two. We'll, we'll have to figure it out. Maybe three. Who knows? Depends a bit on how the economy is faring. Yeah. But we also have U.S. elections. We which have a is lot a, of elections. Like, the craziest of which will be probably in the U.S. US. There's yes, no question like, about that. I think that. that's getting the most media attention. It'll probably be the most impactful for gold as well. I agree. I don't think that, you know, the France election is going to have an impact on the gold price, but the U.S. election. Yeah. Right. Um, so, but let's start with the Fed because only it's it's very topical because uh, Jerome Powell probably, as we speak, is in front of the uh, the House Committee, and uh, the, what, what is the I'm Fed? I'm going to guess he's saying blah blah blah. By the way, but go blah, ahead. Blah, neutral. <laughs> uh, you know, we're data dependent. Um, yes. What do you expect the Fed going is is going to do, and what do you think the impact is going to be? I I think the Fed is going to cut rates before they raise them. Um, I think they would have done it already if they were anywhere even close to, to moving toward 2%. I don't think they're ever going to get to 2%, um, but they know that they must cut rates. So his, his testimony is basically harder or higher for longer, you know, labor market is resilient, uh, consumer spending is still strong, GDP is still strong, um, and we're biased toward cutting rates, not raising them. Make no mistake, they're already starting backtracking. They are going to cut rates because they have to. They cannot finance the debt. We've discussed this before. Um, and I think once you start getting a little bit of a sense of relief and a little bit of looser monetary policy, I think uh, that's going to bring a lot more people into the metals market than they normally would have. Um, somebody actually asked me the other day, you know, what happens with Biden? What happens with Trump? Does Powell remain? I really don't know the answer. I don't think either one of them like You're him right now. You're answering my next question. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to go there, but um, if we're going to get there anyway, might as well get there now. Um, I don't think either one of them like him. Yeah. Uh, what one iota, I think uh, they both, whether you're Democrat or Republican, if you're in power, you want to you want a positive economy, at least to the extent that individual citizens feel not that they are, but they feel wealthy. Yeah. Right. Um, and if they feel wealthy, job done, you get reelected. 
right? That's kind of how things work. Um, the, the economy's stupid, I think, was the, the saying from, from a number of years ago. Uh, so I think they both want looser policy. I think they want Americans to feel wealthier. Um, and I think they both want to get rid of Powell because he hasn't dropped it fast enough. Um, so I don't know uh, about his future. I, I, I don't think I'd be taking out a long-term mortgage in the D.C. area if I were him. Um, but, uh, you know, whoever is in that role, uh, their hands are kind of tied. They're going to be cutting rates. I was going to say, like, if both, uh, both sides of the aisle hate you, it's pretty easy to be bipartisan, isn't it? I guess um, if you want job security, you're going to have to appease him somehow. And I think he wants job security. I don't, I don't think anybody wants to sit in that position and be the guy that broke the dollar. I don't know. He's making um, 180 grand a year, which might sound like a lot, but for the trouble he's going through to make he, that money, he wants it's like to, it's his legacy is much more important, yeah. I think, to probably to anybody in that position. Um, but in all fairness, and, and, and I don't know where you stand on this, but he didn't break the dollar. Congress broke the dollar. Yeah. They haven't balanced anything on either side of the aisle for decades. Um, Powell or anyone can't fix that. Uh, well, if you're running two trillion dollar deficit, that's not on the back of Powell's. Can't, can't, like, on, can't fix that with rate cuts. Yeah, I agree. Right? I agree. Like he, he, in the end, like he, he, the only thing he controls is the interest rates. Yep. And uh, we had, uh, I think Peter Kroskov mentioned, like next year, like it might be 1.7 trillion dollars if uh, we keep the current, uh, you know, interest they're, rate environment, they're cut. They which, have which to. is insane. So yeah. he's somewhat forced, or Yellen is probably forcing him. I'm not sure what kind of material she has on him, but she has to force him to cut. Yeah just yeah. to keep it viable. Otherwise, it'll just probably implode. It's not yet political, which is a bit surprising because we've jumped over a trillion dollars. The, uh, it's not unpolitical. Know. Yeah, but it's, like, it's not being debated. <laughs> like, uh, you don't see any headlines about it. Like, wow. you, you, you think look it'd at be- the, Look at the press and, and there's your answer. Not right. everybody's telling the truth like you are, Kai. Oh, like, well, so. you can, not everybody can be as honest, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it's interesting that it's not being debated more. Yeah. All right. Um, what, what do you think? Who's better for the gold price, Trump or Biden? You know, I don't know. I, I, I'm kind of agnostic on that. Um, I think everybody needs medals. Uh, and I don't want to upset anybody, but I'm going to share a little vignette. Uh, this this was told to me. I, I You know, when Trump, or, yeah, when Trump was elected, uh, came was a shock to a lot of people uh, that he could pull that off. Um, and leading up to that, gold was on a pretty good tear. After he was elected, gold pulled back. Um, and I'm like, why is that? Hmm. What, what's going on here? And, and there was somebody in my industry that suggested, postulated that it's because, and this is his words, not mine. Don't, don't vilify <laughs> me. He said, Democrats don't buy gold. Libertarians can't afford gold. And Republicans only buy gold when they're scared. And they were no longer scared when Trump was elected. <laughs> um, so that was his thought. Now, as a metals dealer, 28 years, I will tell you, I have sold gold to Democrats, to Libertarians, and to Republicans. They can't afford it and they do all appreciate it. To what extent, I don't know. Um, but I'm, I'm thinking that uh, as long as the economy is a mess, whoever's in charge, gold has a role. Do you see a substitution effect? Is uh, silver being distributed more or more bo uh, bought more than gold right now? It's starting. That's, that's why silver start to outperform gold now. And we see this in every rally, the the, the precious metal, the, the gold price goes higher um, and people start saying, oh my gosh. Although, side note from my presentation, World Gold Council chart, um, if you look at the tonnage uh, consumption uh, of bar and coin investment, okay, you can see the tonnage increasing steadily even as the gold price increases. That's not normal, especially considering most of that buying is happening in Asia. Okay, very price conscious. Um, and yet we're seeing the tonnage go up, the consumption go up as the price goes up. So, but we're starting to see substitution for silver, the poor man's gold. Um, you can control a bigger chunk uh, uh, and have a more profit potential potentially owning silver here. And I think people are starting to add to their gold holdings with silver or substitute. Uh, yeah. But we're still a long way off. I mean, this is super early in the bull market. Yeah, we're seeing that in India happen as well, where people yes. are buying a lot more silver than gold. True. And we see the premiums down in uh, yeah down in India, although in China, the premiums are sky high. Uh, so they really want gold. Yeah.
How, how do you see the silver price in, uh, developing, like in, in regard to gold? It usually used to be like a three to one leverage silver to gold. We're not really seeing that yet. Like silver, yes, has outperformed gold. I, yes. I, I give everybody that. That's easy to see. You look yeah. at the charts. It was, like it was 30 a twenty percent versus, versus thirty, something yeah, like a ten percent gap or something. Yep. But it should be a thirty percent gap. Oh, it's going right? to so, be more. You know, last, last bull market um, in, in a ten-year period, silver went up a thousand percent. Gold was up six fifty. Um, so it, you're going to see that. What is it? Two to one. Yeah, right. Uh, or three to I use whatever like, historically it is. it's like three to one or something. Yeah, like that, exactly. So. so that that makes sense, uh, and we'll get there. Um, but it's again still very very early. Uh, it might be more pronounced this time around, more magnified, uh, because you look at the the supply demand fundamentals, and you know we had eleven straight years of uh, uh, surplus surplus production of silver, and that was wiped out in two years of. Yeah. Uh, deficit production, and it looks like we're heading further down that track with increased demand for green technologies, solar panels, things of this nature. So um, I think if you sprinkle that in, you might even have a bigger impact this time in the silver market. I don't speak with too many bullion dealers. Like, what is the most sought after product these days? And uh, if I were to come to you today, what would you sell me? Uh, well, the first thing I would ask is, why are you buying it, right? Because it may dictate what you own um, versus divisibility versus, you know, a, a kilo bar. A long, long term investment. Yeah, long term investment. Um, you know, typically it's going to be a one ounce coin or a one ounce bar is is where you have the, the nice mix of divisibility and cost effectiveness in terms of premium. So for gold, I, I'd be looking at one of the most popular coins in the world, probably the Eagle, the Maple, the Kangaroo, the Philharmonic. Um, for uh, bars, you want to go with mainstream bars that people know and trust. LBMA approved is basically what you're looking for there, London Bullion Market Association. Uh, for silver, um, if you're an American, I, I love junk silver. The premiums are not high. Right now, what's, not, what's junk silver? Yeah, so it's it's pre nineteen sixty five U S silver coinage. Okay, uh, yeah. So uh, dimes, quarters, and halves. Uh, our circulating currency was ninety percent silver as it was made until the year I was born. <laughs> that's when money became crap in sixty five. Um, so uh, that's bought and sold for the silver content. If you take a thousand dollars face value, so. 10,000 dimes, 4,000 quarters, or 2,000 half dollars in a sack, and you melt them down at the refinery, they're getting 715 troy ounces of silver out of every bag. And that is what is bought and sold for. So every bag is what, about $23,000, $24,000 now. Um, but you can, you, you hear people say, you know, you can still buy a gallon of gas for a quarter, right? Yeah. Because if it's, if it's a pre-1965 quarter because of the silver content. Yeah. Okay. I own a few of those. Actually, I bought go. them at a pawn shop. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. So you what did I pay? What did I pay for one? I bought six bucks. I hell, paid for one. Hell of a lot less than than what you're doing now. I'm sure. Yeah. So, oh, was a couple of years ago. but the premiums so. are low, so that's great for divisibility. Yeah. But I also like, you know, one ounce of regals, one ounce of maples, or rounds, as long as the premium is not crazy. Go wherever the premiums low there. What product do you buy the most? Like meaning, because uh, you buy and sell, of course. Yeah. So what, what do you buy when somebody comes to you? Like, I'll take this, but I won't take this. Most people are, are, are dealing in gold and eagles and maples. Uh, there are the two most popular coins in the world. Uh, no question about it. For silver in America, people are buying silver eagles yeah. or rounds, buffalo rounds. Or and that's what they're selling to you? Like buying that's what and you're buying? selling, yeah, yeah both. Because yeah, okay. so that's what they have, yeah. you know? Um, and, and of course, you know, we do other things. We have Perth Mint certificates. So we see a lot of buying and selling there as well, which which is, you know, just cost-effective storage in Australia. So. No, fantastic. Awesome. Rich, really interesting conversation. Yeah. Really appreciate it. Uh, fantastic to see you again. It's always fun to catch up with you in person. And uh, I always enjoy talking with soon. bullion dealers, a bit of a dis different discussion because you have different insights into yeah. what is happening in the background. How's the consumer doing? Because you told me like, they're, sell they're selling sil gold yeah. silver to cover their credit blows, card debt. Blows, blows your mind from, from the surface. Uh, but if you dig in a little, it makes a lot of sense. No, it kind of explains the lag that yeah. we're seeing and the sort of, wh why isn't it really taking off? Yeah. And uh, why coming. is the West not really buying? And so it explains it to a degree. Uh, yeah, always I looking agree. for logical ex explanations. It is coming. Make no so, mistake. Fantastic. Rich, where can we follow you? Uh, you can uh, uh, follow us at our website, uh, Asset Strategies. 
assetstrategies.com. Uh, send me an email, uh, infoasi at assetstrategies.com. Oh, you're one of those info email addresses. Yeah, oh, yeah. There you it's go. just easy. And then somebody else answers. Yeah, we, we get <laughs> no, it. No, no, I'll answer. I'll answer. Just ask for me. They okay. know. Okay, no, so. fantastic. Rich, appreciate it. Always great catching up. And to everybody else, thank you so much for tuning in here to Soar Financially from the floor of the Rule Symposium in Boca Raton, Florida. Hope you enjoyed this conversation. A bit different. I love chatting with bullion dealers. Get a different inside, different perspective. Of course, they're bullish gold. They want to sell gold, but it's interesting to look at why they want to do that. Like, of course, they have your your wealth at heart, and and their what is that? Your yeah. your wealth is that clo is close to their heart. I don't know, whatever that. I'll like, give you that. You know what yes, I mean. So we're passionate they want to preserve it. your wealth. That's what I was trying to say. Um, really appreciate you tuning in. What are you on? Do you own uh, maples, eagles, Australian kangaroos? What which which one's your favorite? I'm really curious. Which one's your favorite? Uh, from a pretty, from a uh, aesthetic standpoint, yeah, I, I love the U.S. Buffalo. I love the Indian head on one side and the Buffalo on the other. I think it's a beautiful coin. Uh, but I own pretty much everything you just said. Okay, no, fantastic, <laughs> awesome, awesome. Really appreciate you tuning in. Please like and subscribe to the channel. It helps us out tremendously. And uh, we'll be back with lots more here from the Rules Symposium in Boca Raton, Florida. Thank you so much.